Welcome to um, CLCC Sixth Form Dance Virtual Induction Session. Um, so I'm Mrs Miles and you'll be aware that um, Mrs Hunt will also be delivering the course as well. We deliver Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Certificate in Performing Arts and we focus on dance. This is equivalent to 1A level. Over the next few slides, we'll talk through a bit of an overview of the course um, and then we'll do some tasks relating to the course to prepare you for your start in September. OK, so as I pre previously said, um, we deliver the Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Certificate in Performing Arts. This is equivalent to one A level. Um, we do five units, which we're going to go through in a moment. Two are mandatory, three are optional, um, and two units are externally assessed. So it is set by the exam board and marked by the exam board. We will set your work off. The rest will be marked internally and then externally standardised um, and moderated. So we'll send some sample off to the exam board. Um, it's, it's an amazing course full of opportunities for you to go on to study anything, obviously, especially performing arts, but this will um, supplement any um, profession because of the skill set that you will learn that are outside um, the actual course content so so obviously building confidence resilience um, group work skills evaluation analysis and so on it, it's a very comprehensive course and it suits a, a many of the higher education courses OK, so here you can see the units that we'll be um, studying over the next couple of years. So unit three and 34, the top two, they are your mandatory units. They're the ones that has to be um, has to be completed. Um, the first one, if you see that is a 120 hour um, uh, unit. So it's a double weighting to all the other ones. And that is the external assessment. So. It, it will require you to to respond to a brief as a group um, do lots of research preparation and performance for a group workshop unit 34 developing skills and technique is a very practical based unit um, again this is mandatory you have to do this obviously it's performing arts and it's it's really focused on you developing your skills unit 12 13 and 22 are the options that we are we have chosen for you to study um, we've chosen Unit 12, Contemporary Dance Technique, because obviously that is exactly what you'd be doing if you did A-level. However, you get an option now to explore many other styles in, in the Units 3, 34 and 22. But we're really going to focus on your Contemporary Technique in, in Unit 12. So you study um, pra practitioners, you study techniques, you do some theory work and obviously ap application of practical skill. Unit 13, Healthy Dancer, is a really good one for you to understand um, how a dancer performs in relation to the physiology, how you can make your lifestyle better through the, the choices you make for diet, for exercise and so on, in relation to being a, being a dancer. Um, it's really, really useful for you going forward for um, kind of lifelong participation and how you can maintain your health and fitness as a dancer for as long as possible. But then in just everyday life. Unit 22 is movement and performance. So this really starts um, to explore your RADs, relationships, actions, dynamics and strength, which you'll all have a base understanding of. But it really gives you an opportunity to get a great um, understanding, which will supplement all your other units. So in today's um, induction session, we're going to have a bit of a focus on a key choreographer and um, founder of modern dance in relation to black performers. And we're going to focus on him. He, his name is Alvin Ailey. So he founded his own dance company in um, kind of the mid 1900s. Um, and he was a pioneer for having uh, black dancers in a modern contemporary dance style. Previously, they were only used in kind of vaudeville shows and jazz companies. Um, so it was really unheard of to see performers that were, had black skin in contemporary and ballet. So um, I've just got you a, a little link to watch. And this is looking at some of his performers and how they're actually doing his most 
famous and popular dance revelations which we're going to study but how they are doing that separately whilst in lockdown so I think it's quite important to understand how prevalent um, Ailey's work is in today's society and specifically during lockdown which has a huge influence on not only how we're learning but how these performances are, are working today so what I'd like to do is click the picture and that should take you to a website and just watch the little phrase so you can see what we will be looking at. Okay so who was Alvin Ailey? So there's a bit of information on this slide that I'd like to have uh, a quick read through. Um, some of the key things I want you to take out from here is um, obviously the time when he was uh, when he founded Alvin Ailey American Dance Theatre Company um, was hugely important in terms of of utilising his colour and his race and amplify their voices in a very predominant white environment, specifically when it came to performing. Um, you can see that um, he, he went through quite a lot of tragedy in his early life um, and he found his, his release in performing. Um, so he went to LA at the age of 12, which is very young, um, and he realised he excelled in many things. He watched uh, the Ballet Russe, um, which I've asked you to do a bit of a task on. There's a hyperlink on where it says Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. Um, I'd like you to answer what is um, the Ballet Russe and how did it revolutionise modern dance? So I just want you to make a few points on that. Um, you can see that he trained with Lester Horton, so that's a key, uh, someone who we'll be looking at later in the course, but it's a name that you might want to be aware of. Um, he, he also trained with Martha Graham, and again, we look at Graham techniques, so it's really important to see how these key choreographers informed his training and his style. Um, and you might be able to see some of their stylistic qualities in the performance that we watch. So you've got two little tasks there to do. Um, in the little box at the top right hand corner and there is a hyperlink on in the text which will take you to a website which should give you all the information you need. Okay so what I'd like to do um, here is um, using the sheet that, that you've also got included in this induction, Introduction to Revelations, I'd like you to read through the um, the first couple of pages and um, complete tasks A and B. Don't do anything for C or D yet. So in task A, you need to read through and find three important facts. So don't just go with the obvious. Write, thing, write three things down that you think are really important in terms of understanding Ailey and understanding his work. And then task B, I would like you to watch the clip and it's hyperlinked on that picture. If you click that picture, it will take you to a YouTube page. I want you to watch that section um, and it's about six minutes long and I want you to analyse it in relation to RADs. So what relationships do you see? How do they work with each other? Are they in contact? Is it over and under? Um, question and answer? Do they mirror each other? Do they match? Is it unison, canon? As many things as you can think of for relationships. Actions. What actions do you see them regularly do? Remember that it's stuff like travels, it is gestures, it is stillness, it is elevations, it is rotation. So think about your um, six main actions. What do you see? So things like you'll probably see deep plies and high kicks and so on. Dynamics. What are the dynamics like? What is it? Is it heavy? Is it light? Think about weight. Think about time. Is it fast or slow? Flow. Is it smooth or stuttery? And then space. Do, how do they how do they use dynamics in space? Do they travel in direct space? Is it do they meander? What do they do? Um, and then and then space in generally. What space are they using? Is it high? Is it low? Do they use formations? Um, how do they travel? How do what part of the stage are they upstage, downstage? So really, kind of evaluate the rads that you can see. Be as detailed as you can. I know there's not a huge amount of space, but if you need to go on another sheet to show you understanding, really, really start to show us what you made up at this point. So just read the sheet and complete tasks A and B. Okay, so time to get practical. Uh, what I've done is um, I found a lovely little uh, workshop on Revelations, which is one of um, Ailey's most famous pieces. Um, it's by a lady called Hope Boykin, and it's been put up by the Alvin Ailey Dance Theatre Company. Um, it's a 13-minute video, and she does some um, phrases from the uh, routine and puts it into 
um, a nice little sections for you just to replicate and have a go at and just try and get a feel of what the movements are like. So what I'd like you to do is click on the image, which um, will take you to the um, YouTube page because it's been hyperlinked for you and you can have a good go at the workshop. Um, any questions, make sure you just drop me an email and I can send the link directly for you to do it at another point if necessary. OK, so we've looked a little bit about who Ailey was, um, some background information which you will need to use um, later on in this activity. Um, and now it's kind of time to delve into a little bit more of the theory aspects. This is obviously part of the course. Um, so learning aim A is where for, for the unit we're studying in contemporary dance is looking at how um, contemporary dance developed in terms of the evolution of techniques, um, the background, etc. So we look at study in particular uh, practitioners. One of them we are going to look at in terms of more, uh, more recent is um, Alvin Ailey. So we are going to look into him and we're going to start the process now so you come in ready with a bit of information to help you. So what you need to do um, is just have a quick read through. This is a distinction standard um, example of how the learning and aim should be um, presented. So it says, well, learners will present examples of practitioners, a minimum of three. Obviously, we're only looking at Ailey today and looking at doing some um, exploration in terms of research and compare and contrast the key features. So I've um, on the next slide, you'll see how I've split those up for you. Um, and I'd like you to create a PowerPoint titled Alvin Ailey Revelations. And then what we will do um, is we'll collate this information together. And then over summer, you've got time to develop this um, and bring it back as your summer work. And we will obviously continue to learn the practical side as well. And then when we look at two other practitioners, you'll be able to then create your um, PowerPoint, how, comparing and contrasting how contemporary dancers um evolved over the, the past kind of 100 years or so. Um, it says, remember to use demonstrate good um, presentation skills, excellent terminology and use of grammar. So it's really important um, that you are demonstrating that for a distinction grade. OK, so as you can see, um, I've put some headings for each of your slides and you can go on more than one slide. You don't need to cram it all on one um, in terms of what you need to do for your summer task. So you can start this now, um, but this is what we'd be expecting you to complete over the summer in preparation. Bear in mind, we still have to do two other practitioners and we still need to compare and contrast. We still need to understand the physicality of it. So one 13 minute workshop isn't going to do that. So you can see we'll be exploring that. Um, in more detail. Um, you need to look at the background information and put a slide together on that. Bearing in mind, you have got a lovely bit of information that I provided for you in your worksheet. You can't regurgitate that, but you need to put it in your own words, um, but obviously use that to help you and do a bit more research. Um, we're looking at the wade in the water section specifically now, and you're going to tell me what the structure of the dance is. So where is it set? And um, so how has it been put together? Is it binary, tertiary, rondo, etc.? And then the setting, what does it look like um, in terms of it, it? it's made to look like, it's on a stage, it's made to look like the river, etc. The next slide will be looking at the, quali uh, the qualities of the style. So how, what makes it contemporary? How do you know it's contemporary as opposed to a jazz dance or a tap dance, for example? So you could talk about the use of technical work and the core and groundwork, um, elevations. You can see those sort of techniques come through. So really pinpoint in this. Use pictures to support it, annotate them, really show me. Are there any other influences in this dance that you can draw upon to say how what makes it particularly special? The next slide, you're look at talking about costume, music and lighting. So describe them, explain how effective they are, analyse um, and give your opinion on what you think to them, because this will help you later on. And then the last one is physical and interpretive skills. What skills can you see the performers using? Why do they make it more effective? Um, and remember, physical means what the body does and interpretive means how the body does it. So I really want to see you, you should have good knowledge on this already. So this is just now applying the knowledge you already have um, and putting it to a new 
task, new choreography. Okay then, so to finish off this induction session, um, obviously we want to give you some summer work to focus on over uh, the next few weeks and obviously prepare you for when we all return, hopefully face to face a little bit more. Um, and so what I'd like you to do is complete the PowerPoint that um, you started in today's session using the slides um, above and again, making sure that it's the best work that you can produce. And then we'll go back to the worksheet now and there was task C and D on there. So what would I like what we would like you to do is um, complete those tasks and uh, record that please and keep that safe and when you come and start year 12 with us you'll have that recording for us to use. That recording then can be used as evidence to support your grade. So um, think about making sure you're demonstrating your abilities thoroughly. It doesn't matter where it's recorded, whether it's in the garden, um, in your living room, it doesn't matter, but it shows that you are applying yourself. It shows that you are committed to improving, which are all aspects of this course. Um, so good luck with that. Any questions, you can email us and the emails on the PowerPoint. And we are really looking forward to meeting you all properly and seeing you in September. Good luck.